Uh, I'm here today with uh, Robert O'Dowd, who joins us at the Eurocall 2015 conference in Padova, in Italy. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Um, so first of all, could you tell us a little bit about how you started out in teaching? In teaching? Mm. Um, I, I decided I wanted to be a teacher, I think, when I was in university. I, just, mm. I was just drawn to it, and I saw the lives of of my teachers at university, in the University of Limerick, where, mm. I, where I did my first, my, my primary degree. And I just thought it was an, a, an ideal life, this mixture of re doing research and teaching and stuff like that. I just found it very attractive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you started off in Germany, is that right? Um, when I was in, in, at the University of Limerick, I, did, I studied German and French. Mm. So I did years abroad, in, in, first in France and then in Germany. And after that, I went to, to, to work in Germany for a while. Yeah. Okay, and now you're in Spain and you've been yes, there for some that's time. that's my home now, yeah. Yes, yeah. very nice. Um, so you were talking to us yesterday in your keynote. It's a great keynote, by the way. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank uh, about telecollaboration. And, and if people are familiar with your name, um, which I'm sure a lot of people are, they would know about your work in telecollaboration. Yeah. But can you explain uh, approximately, roughly, what, what it is? What it is. Okay. Very basically, it's the idea of bringing groups of language learners into contact together uh, over the internet and engaging them in communicative tasks so that they develop their language skills, intercultural awareness, and digital skills. Okay. Um, that's, that's quite a key part of it, isn't it? It's not just language, but culture is very important. Yeah, well, I, I suppose it depends on who you talk to, because mm. there will be certain researchers that would focus very much on the linguistic development. That, you know, it just happens to be that, shall we say, my research and the people that I work with mm. were very interested in the intercultural side of things. Okay. Okay, so, yeah, but yeah, it depends on, on your research focus. And, and yesterday you talked about um, having to kind of convince non believers. So you've been talking to yeah. people outside of the call environment exactly. and also people who are not really familiar with telecollaboration. What yeah. challenges have you faced? Uh, well, first of all, it, um, compared to things like MOOCs, for example, mm -hmm. uh, which are pretty easy to, the concept of a MOOC is pretty easy to understand because it's basically a teacher record, uh, recorded on a video giving his lecture mm -hmm. and that being broadcast and whatever. That's pretty easy to understand. Mm -hmm. But the idea of engaging learners in different countries in interaction together, getting them to collaborate together, you know, it, you know this is a kind of, a, it's a messy mm -hmm. type of thing. It's not so obvious. So, first of all, especially for non-language teachers, this can be a very hard thing to do because, you know, many, many, um, uh, many teachers in other, in, in other disciplines, especially in the sciences, wouldn't do things like that. Even though, when their students qualify and actually go on to become international workers, they do end up with doing telecollaboration. Mm -hmm. okay, but it just doesn't form part of the education, normally. Mm -hmm. So that guidance, <coughs> excuse me, that guidance from teachers is a key part of telecollaboration. I, I consider it is, yeah. Yes. The, um, originally when tele, uh, telecollaboration started up and became popular, it was done, shall we say, outside of classrooms. Mm. But sometimes the interactions that take place between learners are so complex and, you know, it, students need help in writing their messages or, you know, in forming their interactions and then interpreting the messages and the, the interactions that they have with other learners. Mm. So that's what the, that's the benefit is, is that by having, bringing that into the classroom and having the teacher there, you've got this, this expert in language and culture who's helping you to, to understand what is going on in the interaction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think that's very important. Okay. Um, so what kind of uh, non-teachers uh, have you been trying to convince? Non-teachers? Yeah. Um, I suppose a lot of um, shall we say people at vice, you know, vice rector, vice rector level, you know, mm -hmm. presidents and and um, you know, vice presidents of universities, because in order for this to work properly, you know, apart from having teachers are inter interested in it, you need a kind of a top-down support mm -hmm. from from you know policy makers, decision makers at universities, so they will encourage their teachers to do it, support their teachers to do it by providing training and financing if possible. So you, I think there really has to be not only a bottom-up by training teachers, you mm. need also a top-down approach to this in order for it to be successful. But uh, you mentioned that, that uh, in going out to outsiders, if you like, it helps you have a better understanding of uh, the questions, because you know, they ask the difficult questions, right? They, they ask difficult questions, and they, and they ask for convincing answers. Mm. And whereas if you work in, if you spend your time presenting your work 
to other people who believe the same things as you do, they're not going to ask you the difficult questions anymore because they more or less agree with you anyway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whereas outsiders are more skeptical mm -hmm. and therefore they demand for you to produce evidence or examples that will show that, um, you know, the, that this, this approach to learning works. So mm -hmm. you mentioned uh, that it's about 20 years since the uh, telecollaboration first kind of became mentioned. Uh, but in that time, telecollaboration is coming somewhat more into the mainstream. Would you say that's fair? I, it's, yeah, it would, um, certainly would appear to be a lot better known now. I mean, yesterday I asked in, in, in Eurocall, in the, in, in, during my talk, I asked how many people had ever organized one, mm. and at least half <laughs> had been involved. You know? So, I mean, that's a pretty good sign. Mm. And it's also beginning to, to appear in different publications that are outside of call. Okay? Right. Are, you know, just general foreign language publications, publications about CLIL, about bilingual education, that are used in telecollaboration as an example. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's I, yeah, slowly but surely. Yes, But yes. still, compared to things like, well, first of all, blended learning, then MOOCs, and then the flipped classroom, you know, it, it, it's not on that level yet, mm -hmm. very much. Yeah, you showed us a few different um, kind of reports from Europe and, and MOOCs, MOOCs, MOOCs came up time and again, but telecollaboration not, not mentioned yeah. to, to yeah. the same degree. Um, there were a few criticisms that you mentioned. Um, could you could you explain a few of those or elaborate yeah, well, a little? I bit? suppose there's practical issues to it always, and in, you know, this, it's so you know the, these can, exchanges can be so difficult to set up, mm. to organise, to find a teacher in another country that has you know a group of students that want to work with you. Mm. That the two groups are compatible. Timetables, access to technology. Okay. So there's lots of, lots of practical problems about about it. But there's also, you know, pedagogical issues about it. You know, um, some some teachers question the idea of putting students into contact with other students. They're saying this isn't very authentic. Mm. If we have the internet. We should be putting our students into contact with native speakers, pr uh, but are, that are not students. You know what I mean? That they are maybe working. Uh, that they are communicating on discussion forums or fan websites or whatever. You know, to so make the communication more authentic. Okay, that's one of the, the main criticisms. Of it. Actually, yeah, that, that was a question that arose for me. I mean, uh, these days it's so easy for students to create their own spaces to communicate with each other. Um, I mean, I have a lot of students who studied abroad and use Facebook, and they're talking to their friends from overseas in yeah. various different languages, and it's, they, they really take ownership of it. Yeah. Um, how does telecollaboration respond to that kind okay. of... I mean, that, but that, that type of communication over Facebook, between friends... Uh, it's um, it's not necessarily superficial, mm -hmm. but the type of things that the students do on it are not very, shall we say, challenging. Mm -hmm. It's socialising. It's being positive. It's being friendly. It's you know, it's all very lightweight, maybe, maybe in, in that sense. What we've got to do in telecollaboration is get students ready for the type of things that they're going to have to do uh, when they leave university. In, in our case, uh, they're kind of you know collaborating with people in other countries to to create things, to do projects together. And that's a lot more messy than just doing Facebook. Mm. And you know, you you have to under, you try to you know, in Facebook and in other in other forums like that, people tend to brush over possible you know clashes and mm. problems and things like that. To the collaboration, we want these clashes to be you know, to be brought up, to be brought to the centre, and to be discussed and to be learned from. Mm. We showed us some examples of some quite uh, uh, challenging conversations, um, talking about. Um, conflict in Gaza with, between yeah, German and yeah. Israeli students yeah, and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, that's probably not something they chat about on Facebook. You see, that's it. And yeah. but, but yet, that is, you know, these are real life things that should be discussed and students mm -hmm. should be able to, you know, understand, you know, in intercultural communication, how does it work? You know, what people don't, you know, people do things with words, as Paige Ware once said. You know, people, it's not, you, you know, you cannot just simply interpret it on a, interpret on a superficial level mm. what people write or what people say in these exchanges. Mm -hmm. You've got to learn to understand the background from where these things are coming from. Yes. Um, I also uh, was interested near the end of your talk when you were talking about moving beyond bicultural and bilingual to multicultural, multilingual, lingua franca mm. situations. Can you yeah, elaborate? Because that, uh, that's the world we're living in. Mm. I mean, you know, the, the, this English no longer belongs to Irish people and English people. It belongs to you know to the world in many different ways. People from all over the world are using English, and they're using it in their own ways. Mm. 
And we've got to get our students ready for that mm -hmm. by learning how to communicate effectively with other people, speakers of other languages that use English, just mm -hmm. like they do. You know, if anyone watching this is interested in, in researching further, where yeah. would you recommend um, they start? Uh, we've, we've set up a platform called Unicollaboration, unicollaboration.eu. Okay, I'll put a link to that. Yeah, that would be great. And there they can, find, they can find partner classes, they can find information about how to set up exchanges, the tasks you can do, lots, you know, it's, and it's free, and you, you can explore the site without becoming a member, but if you want to actually participate and look for classes, you have to then become a member, but again, okay. it's free. Okay, that's great. Um, and I, I'll also put a link to one or two of the, the books and the articles that you've written, great. Um, great. which are obviously very good too. Um, um, so finally, I take it that you're fairly positive for the future of telecollaboration? Yes, but there's an awful lot of work left to be done, and we have to, uh, I find that we very often, us academics, we're very good at our, shall we say, our, maybe our teaching and our research, but maybe we've got to s maybe learn how to sell ourselves more mm -hmm. and sell our work better and make it m better known among people that, aren't, that we wouldn't normally come into contact mm -hmm. with. And I think that's part of, uh, if you're doing something that you believe is useful and good and power and potentially very powerful as a learning tool, then it's, you've got a duty to, to do this, to make it better known and you know, to, to help get it more integrated across universities, not just in, in our little foreign language area. Mm -hmm. That's a great message for all of us, I think. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay,